I, th I think salmon probably has got to be the most popular fish, I guess, in the Northwest, wouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. And absolutely. Salmon, so cake, many salmon cakes get, a, get, uh, get you going kind of bit. Salmon cakes are good. Okay, tell us a little bit about where you went to, to visit uh, for salmon cakes and, and what, oh, green bean salad. And green bean salad. So the crew and I went to Flying Fish at South Lake Union and cooked with Chef Christine Keff. Um, and we made salmon cakes, which were, oh, they were outstanding. And then because Chris is Chris, she said, we can't just have salmon cakes. So we did a little <laughs> green bean salad that was out of this world. Absolutely excellent. And it's so colorful. On a green bean salad, do you use a lot of spices or? or? No, she used balsamic vinegar, which was just lovely. Ah, You're gonna great idea, see this great second. idea. So this, this is a recipe that uh, comes from a, a very, very uh, good restaurant, a very famous restaurant. Uh, and you're going to be able to do it in your own kitchen. How long did it take you to put this together, Kara? 10, maybe 15 minutes. We put the salmon cakes together. They were cooking while we put the uh, salad together. It's very quick, very fast. Well, obviously that's going to help you, especially if you walk in like I do sometimes at quarter to five and you want to serve dinner at 10 after five. You're like, ah, what am I going to do? So let's check it out, George. Might do this one. Let's take a look. South Lake Union neighborhood today at Flying Fish Restaurant and I'm in the back kitchen with Chef Christine Kapp. What are we making today, Chris? A salmon cake and a green bean and tomato salad. Ooh, and when you see the list of these ingredients, it's going to make your mouth water. So where do we start? Well, this cake, this salmon cake is very easy. We're going to grind up all the ingredients. We've got some, uh, here's this little KitchenAid grinder and if you got one for your wedding or Christmas and you never knew what to do with it, Here's your chance. So here we go. We're going to turn it on. And we just put these things right in there. we got some green onions or green. scallions. Scallions, right. And then we've got some uh, shallots. Shallots. I know my grandmother used to have a hand crank grinder. And that was one of the things all of us kids coveted. But I think one of my sisters wound up with it. Oh, well, that's why we have electricity. Yes. And sometimes we have to kind of stuff it in there. There we go. So you've got some flat leaf parsley. What else went in there? Dill. Dill. Ooh, wow. Dill. If only you could smell this coming out. And it's beautiful and bright green. Oh, now the next gorgeous. thing we're going to put in there is some smoked salmon, some hot smoked salmon, which you can buy at the grocery. Do you make this here at the restaurant? We make it at the restaurant, but it's not necessary to make your own. Just right. buy some at the store. Just whatever kind you like. Right. Okay. And we've got a couple ounces of that. And the last thing to go in, which kind of cleans out the whole grinder, is uh, salmon. We use wild salmon here. We don't serve any farm salmon. So this is wild salmon trim that we have from all the different kinds of salmon that we use. You don't have to use any particular kind. You can use king or coho or... So these are the little bits that you trim off when you're making those beautifully shaped salmon steaks right. and things for, right. your, for your guests. Yep. Wonderful. So you yep. might be able to get some uh, tails or something from your fishmonger at a little bit lesser price because, boy, salmon is expensive. Yes, it is. But this is what we do with the leftovers. Okay, now that that's all ground, what do we do next? Well, we're going to add a couple more things. Of course, a little salt and pepper. That would be kosher salt you're using there, correct? We use kosher salt just because it's uh, a little easier for us to tell how much we have, but whatever salt you're most comfortable with is fine. And then we're going to put a little bit of goat cheese. This is fresh, mm, a fresh goat, goat cheese, cheese we're putting in here. And do you use that as a binder? It helps bind and it, flavor, and it also gives a great flavor. It sort of melts in the salmon mm. cake. It's really good. And the last thing we're going to do is great just a little bit of lemon zest and that's for a little bit of lighter sort of pick-me-up mm -hmm. bright flavor in the salmon cake. little zippity and doodah. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those things. Yeah. So put that in there. This is another one of those essential kitchen tools that everyone should have. Isn't this a great grater? It makes it so easy to grate oh. lemon zest. Now we're going to use the uh, the spoons that's that right. God gave us and uh, mix this whole thing up. Mm. So you can see that the salmon uh, goat cheese is starting to hold everything together. Oh, wow, and this just, it smells truly fantastic. 
If it tastes only half as good as that, it would be amazing, and I know that it's going to taste I fun. think it, it might taste, you know, mm. close to 95%. That you good. Think? Okay. Yeah. I'm excited about that. So this will make about four salmon cakes. We're going to take a little bit now. Do you want to take care not to overmix it, right? Right. There's no need. There's okay. no need. As soon as the cheese is sort of mixed in, then it's done. It's ready to go. So these are a nice size salmon cake. Mm-hmm. Very nice. And about how thick do you make those? That's about a... Uh, Oh, three quarters of an inch, okay. probably. And now we're ready to cook it. Okay. So we have to get our pan really hot. We've got Super a little hot. bit of canola oh, oil in here. It's almost. way yes. hot. Yep. There we That's go. Good. And we'll put it in there, turn it down just a tad. Then the thing to do is to just let it sit there for a little while until mm -hmm. it gets a nice brown crust on it. You want to turn it down to about medium at this point, otherwise it'll burn. So now it's been a, a minute or two, and we're going to see if it's ready to go. And it's uh, it's getting ready. See, we can move it around a little bit. Looks so like now, it's let go there. It has, pretty much. Now I'm going to flip it over. I've got a nice brown crust on there. Lovely. And now we'll let that cook for another, uh, turn it on low, and let it cook for another three or four minutes on there while we make the green bean salad. OK. We've got some beautiful heirloom tomatoes here. And to make them taste even better, we're going to roast them really slowly mm. and then chill them down before we put them in the salad. So if heirlooms aren't available, because unfortunately we can't get these all year round, you could just use whatever tomato is in the market? Absolutely. It doesn't really matter um, what kind of tomato you use. We're doing these because they're here now. And they're so beautiful. Look at the color on that. Wow. But roasting the tomatoes really brings out the sweetness. Okay. And so the way we do it is it's pretty easy to do these little roasted tomatoes. Just cut them in half, put them on the sheet pan upside down, a little salt, a little pepper, some extra virgin olive oil. Go ahead and splurge. Use a little of the expensive stuff. If you're going to all this trouble, you want to make it really Might good. Might as well make Might it. Might as well. A little bit of dried oregano. Mm. I like dried oregano better than fresh for cooking. Me too. Yeah. So different flavor. It is, and it uh, works a lot better. And then a little bit of thyme leaf. Fresh and This thyme. one I do use fresh. I like the flavor of it. And, and thyme is great because you can grow it in your herb garden and have it pretty much all year round. Oh, yeah. It's totally. wonderful. Especially oh. the hardier varieties. Wow, and that smells great too. OK, then we're going to put these in the oven. And we have some that we've already cooked, and this is what they look like when they come out. You can see they're very soft. They're cooked all the way through, and wow. that really brings out the sweetness. Mm. So we'll come back to these later. You okay. want to put those over there? And, and what's next? Well, we're going to make the dressing. So the first thing to do is take our bacon. This is sliced bacon. Pile it all up here. And is this any special kind of bacon? It's not um, really. Just a good quality. Any kind of bacon will work uh, if you can get to your uh, grocer and they have the kind that's sliced in the, sh in the case there. It's mm -hmm. a little bit thicker and so right. it's a little nicer for this recipe, but it, it really doesn't matter. Okay. It's fine to make it with uh, just the bacon in the package, no big deal. So you don't have to have special applewood smoked bacon or anything <laughs> like that for this recipe? You don't. So now we're going to put this bacon in the pan on the stove and let it render. That means that we're going to let it get crispy slowly and all the fat's going to come out. OK. So while the bacon's cooking, we're going to peel the shallot, okay. slice it up. Because when the bacon's done, we'll take it out of the pan and then cook the shallots in the grease. Mm. Remember how everybody used to have a, a little thing of bacon grease on the back of the you stove. You bet. It had a little filter on top so yeah. that the big pieces of bacon didn't go down in there. That's right. That's yes, right. and we cooked everything in that. We did too, and my mom used to make these um, these oatmeal cookies with bacon grease instead of Crisco. Really? Yeah, it was wow. amazing. I bet they were awesome. They were surprisingly good. Every once in a while, I got to have those cookies. Well, it's not like you have to eat them every day. No. Even though you might want to. No. Okay, so it looks like our bacon is just about ready there. The bacon's uh, all crispy now, and the fat is all out of it. So I, can I have that bowl? Yes, indeed. All right, so now I'm just going to take the bacon out and put it in the bowl. There we go. Now I'll put the pan back on the fire with the bacon grease still in there. 
And all of those shallots. And the shallots Yum. go right in there. And we need to cook these really slowly. So, and in the meantime, we have to cook our beans. Okay, so we are in the meanwhile back at the ranch stage here. Back at the ranch with the beans. So to clean the beans, we want to take the little stem end off. So this is mm -hmm. where the bean connects to the plant. Right. I'm going to take that off. You can leave the other end. I like that end. It's yeah, pretty. Yeah, it, it looks pretty, and uh, it's not tough like the stem end. So these are very young beans, uh, very which is thin. nice this time of year. We can, get, we can ask for the smaller beans. So we have a pot of water. We have a pot of water that's boiling. Mm -hmm. And we want to put... Um, a lot of salt in the A good water. bit of salt? A lot of salt. A lot more than you'd think, right? Just, and is this to flavor the beans? It's to flavor the beans. The water will taste really salty. Right. But the beans won't. And if you don't have enough salt in your water, your beans will never taste right. Yeah. So you've got to do this part. The water's boiling. We just put the beans in there. So here's a bowl of ice water. And the idea is that when we put the Green beans in here, they will stop cooking right. immediately. And they, they stay pretty and green. They yeah. stay pretty and green. Right. So I'm using these tongs to just pick them out of the water. Don't those look great? Yep. Makes me want to run out to the garden and pick green beans. <laughs> if only I had some. <laughs> <laughs> if only you had a garden. Huh? I do have a garden. You do? I have no oh, green. great. So we push them into the water like that. And we'll put those aside for a minute. Okay. Okay. And what's next? Ooh, look at our shallots. Our shallots are all nice and caramelized. So do you have that plate with the? We're going to actually so take we're going them to out. Drain those. And uh, put them on the towel so we get rid of most of the bacon grease. The interesting thing about this salad, even though it has bacon in it, it doesn't actually have any oil in the dressing. So in in an odd way, it's a fairly uh, healthy salad, even though we've got bacon. We don't have a lot of oil. And we've rendered off most of that. Yep, there, see, so. all yep, still in there. There we go. Remember that Crisco commercial? Ooh, look at those. Do we have the bowl with the bacon in it? Bowl with the bacon. And we have the caramelized shallots, which we're just going to toss right in there. They're drained. And then we're going to use some cider vinegar, apple cider vinegar, which we'll pour right in there, and honey. Put the little honey in there. Mmm, I can just visualize this in my brain and how this is going to taste with the sweet and the acid from the vinegar and the salt from the bacon. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I think you'll like You're it. You're going to want to make this. It's kind of interesting because usually this much vinegar would taste just like vinegar, but um, but you've tempered honey. it with all those other things. And yeah. the honey, too. And the, honey. Yeah. and the little bit of uh, mm. oil that's coming off of the bacon and the shallots. So makes kind of a nice salad, very bright and shiny salad. All right, so now those um, beans we have. The beans. The beans. Beans are back. We're going to take them out of, the, uh, out of the water here and just kind of blot them so we don't get a lot of water in our salad dressing and dilute it. Okay. There we go. Great. So, Chef, is this a recipe that you came up with on your own, or is this a recipe that someone introduced you to? Where did, the, where did this come from? No, this is a recipe that we sort of invented, but really, it's just some, a combination of ingredients that are, that are, you know, what people like to eat. Yes. I mean, tomatoes and bacons and, and onions, it all works. So bacon and green beans is always a nice combination. Bacon and green beans is a nice combination. So we've got our, um, we move that over there, we've got our tomatoes here. Let's put them out on the table there. Can I hand that off to you? Yes, indeed. Now, see, I would want to just scrape all this yumminess yeah. off the pan there. <laughs> that would be good, too. It would be good. Um, oh, you're going to peel those. They just, look how easy these peel. Yeah, yeah, just like they just peeling right peppers. Off. Oh, I can think of so many things you could do with these tomatoes. If they okay. made it from here to work, <laughs> or without, you know, just getting eaten just right off the board. Just getting eaten, I know. Sometimes we put them on sandwiches here, which is really good. We put them in pasta salads. Um, they are really versatile, as you say. These were a little bit bigger than I would like to put in my mouth at one time, so I'm going to cut them up here. We could try that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so, it, you know, you don't have to worry about what size your tomato is because afterwards you can cut them up a little bit. Okay. Now I put these into the bowl here. I want that juice. Yum. And now I'm going to just toss it carefully. All righty. Ooh, look our, at that salmon cake. Isn't that great? It's beautiful. Nice and toasty there. Now we'll put a few green beans on here with a, try to get a little bit of the tomato shallot and bacon on there. Mm. There we go. Thanks so much to Chef Christine Keff for inviting us into your kitchen today at Flying Fish. This has been wonderful. I can't wait to try it. Thanks, Carol.